Gomez, the Dynamics GP Blogster here. Today I want to actually talk about Power Platform ALM, yet another episode on it. And today I will be discussing the Power Platform extensions for Visual Studio Code and specifically focusing on the Canvas application management uh, features available from inside of Visual Studio Code. As you probably already know, the Power Platform extension for Visual Studio Code leverages all the functionality available in the Power Apps command line interface. And those are exposed directly in the VS Code environment for you. So let's get started. We will talk about downloading and installing the Power Platform extension for Visual Studio Code. We will talk about a couple of features that are available in it, especially around solutions, not to get too detailed with it. And then we will focus into, uh, into how you can leverage the extension to manage Canvas apps. So let's get started. Okay, so here we are in uh, Visual Studio Code. And I'm just going to click here on extensions. As you can see, I have the search bar for the marketplace extensions. And all I'm going to do here is type in the first few letters, which is Power Platform. And as you can see, I do get the uh, Power Platform VS Code extension to be installed. So I'm just going to click here and go ahead and install this. Code is downloading the extension from the marketplace. Okay, so the extension is now installed. Once it's installed, I can go ahead and close out VS Code and reload it. And this is going to ensure that any aspects of the extension that needed to be reloaded in memory get automatically loaded. So that's important for me, at least, uh, to ensure that the extension is properly installed on this machine. We're going to go ahead and uh, open a terminal window since this is a, um, a command line interface tool. So I'm just going to click here on new terminal. And that's going to actually now open a terminal window where I can begin interacting with the command line interface tool. Now, the good thing about having everything in VS Code is I don't have to go outside of the environment to run uh, command line interfaces. And it sort of brings the entire experience on the one umbrella. So you don't have to work through so many uh, hoops to be able to bring your development environment in one place. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to type pack. So pack will give you the list of commands that are available with the command line tool. But the ones that I want to call your attention to is obviously here's a PCF uh, command for working with uh, Power Apps component framework projects. Here's your Canvas command. This is actually this was actually introduced earlier this year. So uh, this is now available for you to unpack and pack your Canvas applications. And that's kind of what I'm going to focus on today. The other one that has been recently added is a PA portal. And that's just so you can work with your Power Apps portal website. And certainly PA solution has been around for quite some time. So but the first thing you must always do is authenticate to your Power Apps environment. So I'm just going to do a pack out. The next thing I'm going to add here is a name. Then we're going to type name. And the name of this connection will be, I'm just going to call it my environment and the type of uh, environment that I'm logging into. I mean, this is just my preference, but you can set up any name you want for your connection. And then I'm going to tell it that it's going to connect to the cloud and what type of cloud this is going to be public and the URL that I'm connecting to. So I'm just going to backtrack here and type URL and paste the organization URL. So now if you are in doubt of where you can find those URLs, please remember you can see that from your Power Platform Admin Center. So this is the environment I'm connecting to and all you got to do is uh, right click and copy the link if you want and then you can go ahead and paste it out in here now notice that I'm not actually adding a um, user and password and that's because in my organization we use MFA multi-factor authentication so that adds the extra layer of security which this command should allow me to bring up that interface uh, to authenticate in a second Okay. 
Okay, so I think all I did was I forgot to include here um, create. So we want to create the connection here. So that's just a little oversight here. But there we go. Run it again. And there we go. That's my uh, multi-factor authentication window um, to authenticate to Microsoft services. In this particular case to the uh, Power Platform services. So this is validating my connection and making sure that I have proper access to the environment that I wanted to connect to. So if you want to verify that everything is uh, set properly, all you got to do is run Power Apps Auth list. And this will show you all the connections that you have created. So currently I only have one connection, so I should see one connection listed. And the index number for that one should be one. Effectively, here's the index number, that's one. This is the connection name that I created, the org that I'm connecting to, the user account that I'm using to connect, and the type of cloud connection that I have, which is to a public cloud. Now that we're connected to environment, we're gonna see what solutions are listed. So for that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the Power, Power, Platform, uh, Power App Client Solution command, and we're just gonna list them all. So I should list all your solutions in, in the environment that I just connected to. Okay, so as you can see here, we have all these solutions available to us. Okay, so now that I have all solutions listed, I can scroll up if I want and see the version and other information related to these solutions. So that's cool. Remember, you can always run pack solution to get additional information about the options available for working with solutions. Here we can initialize, add a reference, etc. This might be a topic for another video. What I'm interested in showing you today is how to work with Canvas applications and the new Canvas entry in the Power Apps client. So I'm just gonna click here to go to Power Apps and I'm gonna open my timesheet application. So I'm just gonna go here quickly to edit and we're gonna create an export of this application. So this is gonna export all the uh, JSON code, etc., related to this Canvas app. And we'll see how we can leverage that to create source control files and readable code, uh, PowerFX code from Power Apps. Now that my app is loaded, I'm gonna go to file. And then I'm gonna do a save as here, and I'm gonna save it to this computer. Now that my file is ready for download, I'm just gonna click on the download option here, and that should actually download it into my local downloads folder, okay? So I can open the folder, and I can see it here in my downloads folder. So conveniently, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this to a working directory. That could be your source code control image folder, but I'm gonna move this to my local directory here under documents. Then we're gonna to go to VS Code. And I have previously set up a timesheet app folder for this. So I'm just gonna paste it in here. Now, in order to unpack this, I must actually have a source directory that I have previously set up as well. So basically what the unpack feature is gonna do is gonna read this MS app file and it's gonna decompile it into this timesheet source folder. So in order to see that working, what we wanna do is we wanna go back here and we're gonna to wanna to unpack this Canvas application. What I'm gonna do then is I'm going to switch to that folder. So we're just gonna go straight to it, CD documents, and that's gonna be VS Code and Timesheet app. So that's my folder. And if I look at this, this contains the uh, timesheet report MS app file that we just downloaded. So now I'm gonna go ahead and unpack that, pack canvas, unpack, and then I'm gonna give it the name of the MS app file. So that's timesheet report, that MS app, and the folder where I want to unpack it. So sources, timesheet, src. So that's gonna go ahead then and run the unpack command. And as you can see, it's um, already operating on the timesheet report app file that I downloaded previously. Okay, so now if we go to File Explorer, this is my timesheet source directory. 
And as you can see, I have all the assets and uh, files that have been unpacked for me. So I'm just going to go ahead here. And if you just drag and drop this into VS Code, you will see that that folder is going to be opened in the application. So the most important thing here is our source folder. Now you can see that all your PowerFX formulas have been extracted into nicely set up YAML files. And uh, these YAML files then contain all the PowerFX code that I need to actually deliver the functionality within the app. Okay, so once we've done with unpacking our application, as you saw previously, there might be the chances where we want to make changes to the app. So those changes can be made directly here in Visual Studio Code. I would say that eventually we will have uh, better color coding of expressions and all these things in the, in the code environment. So I'm looking forward to that at least. But let's say we wanted to correct and fix this message here in this particular application, timesheet application that I'm working on. So I could go ahead and instead of saying your report has been submitted, what we can say is your report has been successfully submitted, just to make the message a little bit more readable. So we can then go ahead and save all these files. So we can save this particular one. And since this is the only one we've modified, we can then go ahead and repack the solution. And for that, we can use the pack command once more so we can do pack canvas in this case, and then the different parameters. So this one will be pack, which is to repack the application. And we will then use the name of the MSAP that we want to give to this file. So just to make it simple and easy, distinguishable, I'm going to put here timesheet report to that MSAP. And then I just got to indicate the sources for the file. So that's going to come from my source directory, in this case, timesheet, or actually, I'm sorry, sources. And that's going to come from timesheets src, which is the folder that I have previously created. So if I go back here, you will see that this is the actual source code. So how would this work with a uh, source, so source code control provider? So if you're using things like um, GitHub or Azure repos, most likely what you would have done is checked out these files. And once you're done with the changes, you would save them as I did in code and then check those files back into the repository. But then the next step you would do is you would then take your source, which you've done here uh, with the changes that you made and repack it so you can then bring it back into, into the Power Apps uh, Studio. So let's just go and hit enter here. So that's going to actually run the packing operation for me. And as I said, you would take this actual timesheet report to that MSAP application and bring it into the environment. So, yep, I probably changed the, um, a couple of things in here. So I have a checksum mismatch. That's okay. You can then go ahead and import that back into the environment. So you should have a file here, which is the timesheet report to that MSAP. And you would then bring that into Power Apps environment. So. This basically concludes uh, what I wanted to show today. And I hope you truly enjoyed the experience. And I encourage you to start looking into the Power Apps command line interface. That way you get a chance to build up expertise with ALM and certainly all the ALM tools that are being delivered by the Power Apps team. Just go ahead and uh, get familiarized with this. Visual Studio Code is actually a free download. And certainly the extension is a free download. So hopefully with that, you are on your way to ALM. Talk to you soon.